Hi, I'm Tom Marshburn of the STS-127 crew, and you're watching NASA TV. Endeavor and a special good morning to you today, Tim. Good morning, uh, Tim. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed the music this morning, and uh, it's really beautiful up here. This is Mission Control Houston. Today's wake up music for the STS-127 crew of Endeavor was a song called These Are Days by the band 10,000 Maniacs. Singer's uh, Natalie Merchant. That uh, tune especially dedicated to Tim Copra, who is uh, riding on Endeavor up to the International Space Station, his new home on orbit. He'll be staying on board and Koichi Wakata will be returning with the rest of the Endeavor crew. Commander Mark Polanski and pilot Doug Hurley, along with Mission Specialist Chris Cassidy, uh, Julie Payette of the Canadian Space Agency, Tom Marshburn, uh, Dave Wolf, and of course Copra, uh, beginning uh, their first full day on orbit, a day that will focus on inspections of the thermal protection system on the outside of the space shuttle, uh, preparations for rendezvous and docking that are coming up tomorrow with the International Space Station, and uh, preparation of the spacesuits at the four spacewalkers, uh, Cassidy, Marshburn, Wolf, and Copra will be using on the five spacewalks planned for this mission. Endeavor Houston for the Gira and Dave Wolf. And Houston, hey, this is Mark and uh, Dave's doing the uh, external survey trying to take photos, but I can help you with the Gira. Yes, uh, he described a compression nut on the Gira that was leaking, and we were wondering if somebody had a few minutes on the mid-deck to uh, troubleshoot that. You betcha. And Houston, if you didn't hear that phone, if I'm uh, staring right at it. If you could uh, grab a 9 16 wrench and uh, try to tighten that uh, compression nut, uh, that would be the first step. Okay, we'll go ahead and put that in work and tell you how it comes out. We don't want you to force it, but just a nice snug, uh, see if it moves. Understand. Here's an endeavor for the gear. Go ahead. Yeah, Box, uh, I was able to get about a, oh, I'd say about a quarter to a third of a turn out of it without over-torquing it and getting it snug. So uh, we'll watch it for a while and, and see if we get any more leakage out of it. That sounds great. Uh, the anatomy of the connection, there's a compression ferrule uh, around the hose itself, and that night tightens the ferrule against the fitting. And so uh, if that worked, that's great. And then the next step is if you can just uh, verify looking around uh, the uh, tube itself, if you see any notice cracks or anything. You 
Yeah, I did a quick inspection and pulled a little bit of the white sleeve off of the plastic and don't see anything noticeable, so uh, we'll hope that uh, this works. Uh, we were thinking of doing the same thing, but wanted to check with you guys first. Perfect. Uh, we'll check back with you in an hour. Capcom Greg Johnson calling up some instructions to the crew on troubleshooting that galley iodine removal assembly leak. A little bit of water dripping out, kind of like a leaky faucet. The crew says with their help from the ground, they believe they have it fixed and they'll continue keeping an eye on that to make sure it doesn't leak again. Endeavor Houston, we see you, Dave, on the flight deck. Could you check out that uh, fitting on the Gira for us and see if it's still leaking? Yeah, Fox, we've been watching it, and I'd say 90% or more of the leak is, is down. It's very low right now. I, I, when you look closely, at the fitting, the exit point of the tubing from the compression fitting does not come out straight. It's maybe eight degrees off. And, uh, you know, Roman and I, uh, we've been talking about um, talking about it with you, uh, maybe not leaving it like that overnight in particular in case it would come apart. Uh, so we need to be thinking about how we want to, we can keep an eye on it during the day. Okay, we appreciate the great report, and we're glad that uh, we've knocked it down uh, considerably. We're going to think about it, and uh, we'll come up with a forward plan for you. Copy, and if you want us to take it apart and put it back together or whatever you, you guys want, we're standing by. But we're, we're safe right now with it. Copy that. view we're seeing now is coming from the one of the systems on the orbiter boom sensor system, this particular one from the laser dynamic range imager, which combines an infrared laser illuminator and an infrared camera rec recorder to build 3D images of the shuttle's heat shield that can be compared to images of the heat shield that were taken before the flight so that teams on the ground can search for any differences. Orbiter Room Sensor System also includes an intensified television camera, which gives the plain black and white TV views that we often see from other cameras inside the shuttle's cargo bay. And then a laser camera system, which is a scanning laser range finder that can be used as a 3D camera to create 3D computer-generated models of the heat shield. 
this inspection today will take about seven hours in all if you include the time it takes to actually get the orbiter boom sensor system set up and then put it back into its place along the sill of the shuttle's cargo bay later tonight. In all about seven hours and requires for the most part three crew members. It takes three because you need two crew members to control the robotic arms movement and then another crew member to operate the other shuttle cameras that are being used inside the shuttle's cabin for situational awareness and clearance views. Today, the three that have drawn that duty are Commander Mark Polinski, Pilot Doug Hurley, and Mission Specialist Julie Payette. Again, they're starting here with the starboard or right wing of Endeavour and then we'll move from there to the nose cap and then after a break for lunch to the port or left wing. As you can see, Commander Mark Polanski, Pilot Doug Hurley and Mission Specialist Julie Payette are getting into the orbiter boom sensor system survey of the shuttle's starboard wing, beginning of their survey for the day. And teams on the ground also report that mission specialist Dave Wolf, Tim Copra, and Chris Cassidy are well into their checkout of the spacesuits that Endeavour is carrying to the International Space Station.
Houston Endeavour recorders are off. We show ourselves complete with the uh, starboard survey, and we're going to set up for the maneuver for the nose cap. We copy and concur.
downlink from Shuttle Endeavour now as it's passing 149 miles above Paris. It's making across uh, over Western Europe at this time. Its current path is going to take it out over uh, Switzerland and then the uh, northern part of Italy here in just a few minutes. You see some storms there, some lightning uh, in the clouds over Europe. That is the city of Zurich, Switzerland, down below. Denver, Houston for Roman and the flight plan. Go ahead. Roman, since we got you ahead a little bit, if you're available, we're ready for the interconnect tank switch from right to left that's on your flight plan at about 035. You could start that now if you're ready. That sounds great. Thanks. I'll put that in work, and uh, Julie and Doug are going to go straight to the OBSS first. Perfect. Thanks. This is Mission Control to Houston. The crew of Endeavour uh, officially finished with the port wing survey using the orbiter boom sensor system. The next step is for the crew to go ahead and berth or uh, put that OBSS extension back uh, into the payload bay where it will remain. <laughs> 